Al's dominating. In I Anaheim. forgot what I, I said. Just blow him away, man. He's not going to catch up to your fastball. But, but Al strikes him out. Al strikes him out second time up. And Chili and I were... We liked each other. We got along great. Yeah, he's great. He's staying away from me in the dugout because he's pissed that I to <laughs> told him what Al's going to do, and you're still striking you out. Al throws a slider. Yeah, and, he hits a homer. Oh, and I'm, but the worst part was, you know, we didn't have any nets back then in front of the dugout, right? He comes to score, and he comes in, and he tells everybody to get out of the way. Lighter. Get he made me come out of the dugout <laughs> towards the on-deck circle, and he wouldn't just shake my hand. He made me do this. He wanted yeah. Al to see. He made me do a double high-five up in yeah, the air. That's funny. So, yeah, and then he sits down next to me afterwards, and he goes, your brother's a dumbass. I can't believe he threw me that. <laughs> Special edition of Amazing Conversation with the Lighter Brothers, Al and Mark. Between the two guys, 30 years of Major League Baseball experience, over 200 wins between the two of you guys. First family, the history of MLB, to have each have a son pitch in the major leagues. So, you know, how does that feel when you heard about that? Jay, how do you think it makes me feel? Hope, Warm great. and fuzzy. Your son, Jack, <laughs> pitched with the yeah. Rangers? No, uh, thank you. Um, it is, first of all, I didn't know until, obviously, all of the uh, folks that do the research on the history. I would have figured, we know that there's been granddads and dads and right. grandsons. We've never had... Um, and then brothers, of course, that was a big deal. But to have fathers and sons to play, mm -hmm. it made me, of course, proud, but it made me realize what a cool, special feat it was, considering they've been documenting the history of baseball since the late 1800s. Yeah. How about you, Mark? You said Mark Leiter pitches for the uh, Cubs now. You know, yeah. I am. Um, Hello, Jay. Thanks for having me. Well, my pleasure. Best. We have a gift, a gift to me in the mail, by so, the way, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't know either. I got some people sent me some texts telling me, and I'm like, well, this can't be true. I didn't, I, at first, didn't believe it. And when I did, I, uh, I was overwhelmed. I thought it was uh, probably, definitely ranking up there with, um, Pretty close to like getting called up that first time being told yeah. like it hit me that much like wow so Al's kid my kid both mm -hmm. of us it uh, I was I was overwhelmed I really was um, yeah I was proud I was proud to say dang not just us but our boys and and they're both good they they could be doing this for a while together uh, like you know Al and I were fortunate to do. Um, yeah it was special one definitely one of the most special feelings I've ever had. Guy, growing up the Professional players, were you like yelling at the umpire dads in the little league? Did you yell at the people? Did you? Did you? Was no, dad. Did, you mean? Did, did you? Did, what, what, well, did, maybe did, some of us. Did you? <laughs> you know, <laughs> when you watch, when you watch them, when, he, when Jack and Mark, Judy were growing up, did you? What did your games? How overbearing were you both? Uh, a you, lot. Uh, I'll go first. Let on him this start one. on this. So, one. I want to hear that. So, uh, <laughs> not at all. I, I when my son got in the car, if he had a bad game, I didn't say a word. Not a word. I had so many bad games in my life. I'm not going to start picking on him because he was 0 for three or gave up hits or runs or whatever. Never. And I will say this in, in for my son: every single game he's ever pitched, at some point, uh, uh, even now, but go back to little league and high school. At some point, he would come up to me later that night, sit down next to me down in the basement, and say, "So, Dad, what'd you think?" Now I knew he was ready to listen. Because if I had a pitching coach coming over to me, whether it's the minor leagues or the big leagues, after I just sucked, I'm not listening to what you said. All you're right, saying. I think uh, I think Jay's question was how overbearing of a dad. So were I you didn't with? pick on him. No, pick. no, the players, the coaches, the umpires. Oh, I think meant with our son. Oh. All of the above. So no, I never got on anybody. I got on an umpire once because he let my son throw one warm up pitch and said throw it down, and it was cold in April and <laughs> tenth grade. And I said, hey, I said that's a good way to hurt his arm. It's freezing <laughs> out. He turned around, me being naive. I didn't know the guy knew who I was, and he said, oh, Mark. He said, I'm telling their coach every inning to knock off the meetings. I said, well, don't take it out on my son. Go kick his ass. But my son's got to throw. It's 35 degrees out. Uh, so I did that one time. And I, and I did, and I'll say this for, uh, for, for kids, uh, for, I don't know who, 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 what age group's listening, but one time my son looked at and he doesn't argue with umps. He's never done anything wrong. Tenth grade, he looked at the ump, and the ump was bad. And he threw his arms up and he yelled, where was that? And I, I yelled from behind the backstop where I was sitting in the bleachers, and I said, quit! 
And I yelled, quit, from the stands. <laughs> and, it, and he looks at me, and everybody's looking at him. What's this guy just yelled, quit for? And I said, if you don't like what you see, get your shit and let's go home. <laughs> I said, otherwise, you throw the ball and let him call the pitches. Uh -huh. So after the game, my son comes over, because I've never done that. And he's and because we have a good relationship. And he goes, Dad, why'd you do that? I said, Mark, what if I was a pro scout watching you for the very first time and you did that? You've never done that, and I know you'll never do it again. They're going to look at you and say, your Uncle Al's a major leaguer, and he's MLB Network, and Yank, your dad played in the big leagues. You're going to look like a prima donna, and that's not who you are. Don't you ever show anybody up on a field. And I never did it again. How I'm about you with, with Jack through the years? Yeah. You know, how, was it, how tough on you, remember, or did you? I disappear because a couple things. What, what Mark just said, like I, I know when I, I would go to a game, I know people are watching. Not to make a big deal of myself, but I know, you know, I played and I certainly watched the chart the game. Certainly being local and yeah. So I charted not as a nut job, I charted to keep my nerves down. And it was a conversation. I started doing this when Jack was travel ball, let's just say tenth grade, eleventh grade, whatever. Yeah. And it was a conversation to trigger whether it was the, the next day or two days after in uh, pitch sequencing that would maybe blossom into a conversation. So, and, and it was mostly good, right? I mean, your kid's doing well and, it, you know, hey, that third inning, you know, what you did with the sequence of the back-to-back, -back, you know, fastball changeup and then that really good curveball. Like, it was more of like that. And then little other things with first pitch strikes and ball strike ratio and swing and miss, the silly stuff. But it was really to lessen my nerves of not, you know, being like a nervous parent. You guys never pinched against each other majors. One time in '97, you were supposed to when you were with the Phillies, and I was with the Marlins. But this, the damn game got rained out, right? And you pitched the next day, and Al got skipped. So that was the one time. Who would have wanted to be pitching against each other? <laughs> I think we had a better lineup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <Forget about her. laughs> You know. <laughs> All right, let's hear it. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no. <laughs> Who knows? I, no, no, go ahead. This was good because this week in baseball got involved. Our mom flew down. Family was all there. I was there. having fun. I was warming up, waving to Al across the field. I was having. <laughs> we were at an age where it would have been so much fun. No, but think about think about the somebody upstairs didn't want it to happen. Yeah. We crisscrossed for, well, your whole base, your whole big league career. You both started with the Yankees, though, right? <sighs> Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, yeah. Mark got uh, when, when did you get up? 90. To 90. We're both on some box scores together. One of my coolest box scores is when I was in spring training with the, with you guys, with the Mets in 01. Al started, we were in uh, Jupiter, and I pitched the last inning of the game. So we're both in that box score, same team. Uh, Phillies, I was a, a setup guy, and then Al started a game, and I came in relief in the eighth for the Phillies, but we weren't on the mound at the same, you know, the same innings. He had just gotten done pitching with the we Mets. We have a picture. Uh, I'm I'm in spring training, and it was late, so I was, it was a spring training game in Lakeland when Mark got traded from the Yankees to the Tigers, uh. and I'm on the mound, and there was a fan at uh, in Lakeland uh, spring training stadium, and there's Mark, it's lighter on his back at third base, Sparky Anderson had him become a pinch, pinch runner, runner. <laughs> while I'm on the mound. So I'm lefty, right? So it's from over the third base, like left field line. Mark's on third base with lighter. And then my back is also because yeah. it was a pretty cool picture. But So uh, I was the backup pitcher. So I was the first guy in if there's goes extra innings. I end up scoring from third to tie the game up. They had to send somebody run over to the AAA, the minor league complex in Lakeland because Billy Muffet goes, well, you just used our, our first backup. <laughs> and I, I think it was a fly ball or something. I tagged up and scored. I hadn't run to bases since high school, 1981, because I remember uh, uh, Graham, Alex Graham, third base coach, he goes, all right, if this happens, line drive, stay, you know, freeze it. I'm like, all right, man, I'm all nervous. He goes, you're all right. I said, man, I haven't been on a base since 1981. <laughs> he goes, all right, listen. And he said, it's all nervous. But I ended up, I forgot how we scored, but it went extra innings, and I got to go shower and even pitch that day. You guys did pitch together in high school, right? Is that your regional? We yeah. didn't. No, he's. Uh, I was a freshman when he was a So senior. you never pitched together? Little League. L Little, Little League? League? Weren't you on the same team with Jeff Musselman? Yep. So, Little uh, League for me, but he was on the same team with Jeff. Jeff and I and Al was his first year of Little League, my last year, and we were on the same you team. You know, my favorite Jeff Musselman story, we were in D Dunedin, and he hit Daryl Stormberry oh, yeah, with a pitch. Probably. 
and, and Daryl chased him to yeah. the next field. I was so embarrassed. Jeff's a good dude. I felt bad for him. <laughs> hey, straw's you gotta, big. I don't know. I might have. I don't know. You got to just stay. You got you to you gotta wait, 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 and then run at him, and hopefully everybody gets in there to, you know. Yeah, you, yeah, you can't. M- Mark, you was telling me you, you travel around to see Mark Pitch, really one of the Cubs' best relievers, you know, solid eight inning, nine inning guy now. You go around the country watching him pitch? You know, I do. I like to, as I've... Uh, I've hit 50 years old now, so I like to see the different stadiums, watch him pitch, take my time. Um, I enjoy that. I like it. Yeah, I like it. With, with Jack out, I mean, he, a second pick. Road hasn't been all that straight for him. How much advice have you given him to say, keep your head on what's going on? It's not going to be that easy. But he, he persevered, got there. He'll be back again before long. So, Jay, it's a fine line for me because, again, what I did, I don't want the comparison of your son and what Al did or what Al's career and Jack's career. I never want him to be a pitcher. Well, that's too late now. So I temper my suggestions and my advice and tutelage at times with where his headspace is at. I, I, I prefer if I could back off and just watch and hug him and love him. That's where I prefer to be. Um, but we're we're close enough and in, in a good place where I wait for him to engage. Does he call you after it starts now in AAA? Or yeah, or? we'll start out texting. It's a it's typical of, you know, I'll let him send something out. Obviously, if it's a good game, like hey, way to go, that's yeah. awesome. You know, whatever. And, and what do you do with Mark? Do you do you call him a lot or you just follow his box score? Up until last year, we probably talked uh, almost every day. Uh, in Chicago, twenty two was tough because he had his options and he didn't deserve to be going up and down. But that's business you got the options you're gonna go up and down so that was a tough year for him um so we talked a lot on his way to the field at times and on the way home uh when he ha- when he pitches bad it's gonna be a long conversation he wants to go over the hitters with me and what he did where he thinks he made mistakes when he pitched good it was usually a you know 15 minute conversation and he, feeling good he's going to hang out but the, the the tougher games are the were always the longer conversations even when he was younger high school college wherever it was he, he wants to talk it through. He learns more by talking about what he did. So I will say this, because we share a lot over the years, of course. His son is way more um, vocal than my son. Like his, So I listen to the stories, and I'm like, I'm like, Jack would never want, like, I don't, he doesn't want to talk. So, like, it, there's a little bit of, like, pulling out, pulling out. He is getting better. Yeah. But Marky, you know, with his dad, it's like, yeah. he immediately engages, so... It, and Mark I think tried to get p- Jack to do it. He told, he said to Jack, "That's in my son's words. That's their job, like mine." And, he, and he's right with yeah. what he's saying. And he tried to let Jack know, "Your dad has been there. My, you know, yeah. your uncle. We, I, we take advantage of it. Talk to." It. And and that's what my son. You know, he wants to. But talk you know to what? It all comes down to this. I will tell you this because we could be critical of where baseball is now, and we are because of when we played. Right? I got yeah. to the biggies in '87. Mark was in '90. 90. Um, you know, we have a generation of of taking the baton from teammates of mine like Tommy John or Ron Guidry, guys that have a connection to the 70s and mm. the 60s. Uh, right, you had Frank Tanana. Frank Tanana. So for us to see and hear how these organizations are being run, and most of them are run by college players that never played pro ball. Forget about big leaguers. And I'm not saying every big league player – is it could be a good coach. There's a lot of really good coaches that I had that never played in the big leagues, or if they did, they barely played. So it doesn't always correlate, but as a dad, and I'm listening to my son talk in detail about a coach that never played, and I'm like, all right, all right, I got to listen to this? Like, it's just not, <laughs> it's not right. But I'm also, I'm, I'm still respectful and careful because he's got to experience it. You know, my son's in a good place. He had a, you know, he's had a good spring, and he's in a good place. Like I know he's in a good place. Mm. When they're not in a good place, that's that's scary for athletes, especially this sport. There's no team sport that failure dominates constantly, and the fragile mind is always weak in the sense of like waiting for something bad to happen. That's what they're. That's what these guys do every single night when you're watching. I don't care how big a star they are. You're always dealing with the balance of confidence and self-esteem. Yeah. Even the stars. The yeah. guy's making $30 million a year. It doesn't matter. 
He's not getting up there with his bank account. He's getting up there with his bat and a dude with a ball in his hand. Mm -hmm. So Mark, Mark told me it wasn't for your brother. You would have six brothers and a sister. It wasn't for your brother John. He was the one who turned your dad on to, to, to baseball. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. who, who I, actually, my my, I, actually, our mom, who's from England, born and raised in England, met my dad after uh, World War II. Um, my, our oldest brother, who's no longer with us, um, which is weird for me to even say, uh, he passed away, what, three years now? Crazy. Yeah. He, when, when the family moved down to the Jersey Shore, um, he was bothering my mom, our mom, for, I want to I wanna join Little League. I wanna, and, um, you know, my dad loved sports, but he wasn't, he didn't play organized sports. So that was, and $12, right? I think it was. I remember less than that. All right, Way but whatever the amount was, he, he needed like there. six or eight bucks to go join the Berkeley Towns of Little League. Yeah. And that was the start of, of uh, the, the Lighter Boys. And you both were Mets fans growing up? I mean, oh uh, my God. Yeah. Mets, Mets were number one. Then, you know, I like the Phillies too because it was easy to go to whoa, Philly. Whoa, 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 whoa. Take Mets it easy. Were, take it easy. No, no. <laughs> I, I was staying in Jay. I liked the Giants and Eagles in football all my life. And I liked the, the Mets and then the Phillies. But You know, uh, as weird as this is, and I know you're a North Jersey guy. Um, it, our love for the Mets came from our father who was born in Manhattan, raised in Long Island, and at inception with the lovable losers, my our father loved Casey Stengel. He loved he thought the whole Casey Stengel right. was like great. And he loved the underdog. So that was a time in the early sixties or whatever when the Yankees were, you know, king king of everything. And he was like, mm. Nope, we're gonna be Mets fans. How proud do you think your dad would be if he when we saw what happened this year when you know, four members of the family oh, in the major yeah. leagues? We weren't braggers anyway, but we never went home and talked about how good we did in a game because he would say, well, you're playing against kids. And we'd be like, well, we're kids too. What do you mean? We're... So we never went home and <laughs> said... It's not a big deal. You're playing against other 12-year-olds. <laughs> yeah, and that's what he would say. So you never went home and said, I was four for four today, unless he said, how'd you do? Then you said how you did. But I, I, you didn't go home and tell him how good you did, just because. But his was inside. It was hidden. And I, I say this only because I remember pitching in double-A and he was following me around like, no phones or anything. He showed up in Hagerstown. They're like, what are you doing here? He goes, oh, what do you mean what are you doing here? I always come here. And they go, Mark's in Charlotte now. And he goes, what? <laughs> so I'm in double A, but he would cut, they had the burnt down stadium in Charlotte then, 1985. Dad comes around uh, the bleachers after I got done pitching. You know, he would laugh and hide his mouth. First time he ever said this, he looks at me and goes, you're going to pitch in the major leagues. Yeah. I was just, I was doing, you know, it was the playoffs uh, when I got good. called up. But I'll never forget Dad's face looking at me because he yeah. didn't boast like that. It was yeah. more, you know, he wasn't yeah. that way. But I pitched really well. They brought me in as a, in a, as a, for, in a for a closer in the playoffs. I just got into double A. But I'll never forget his expression, the way he looked at me and said, uh, and laughing like, "Oh my God, you're going to be there." So what's what's so he would have been proud. So what's crazy? So uh, you know, John started with the little league. Another brother of ours played. What did Kurt played? Kurt, five? right? Kurt, yeah, Kurt. five six years. What are you playing pro ball? Kurt played from 82 to 86 in the minors. Okay, so four or five years. Went to Oklahoma State, kind of like started that kind of mm. next level thing. But our father, um, he, he didn't, like I said, he didn't play organized sports, but he did love sports, and he wanted his boys to get that appreciation of team yeah. sports, right? And I remember on the side of our house... When, when dad, you know, you go play catch. Oh. One thing that he said to me, and me of all people, right? I led the American League of Walks and National League of Walks. He said, if you don't hit me in the chest and I got to run for the <laughs> ball, catch is over. Like, you talk about, like, the silly things that you try to teach a kid, like, if there are parents right. out there. And I yeah. wanted to play catch with my dad. So I was, you know, I was wild, whatever. You know. And I just knew, like, if I made dad go into the hedges or worse, yeah. across the street to get the ball... He'd walk, he'd walk in the house. <laughs> so my whole thing was about just hit my dad in the chest. In the chest. Yeah, had so in see, the chest. think about how simple that is. But it yeah. was like it kept my dad playing catch. Or go get the ball. How He's proud would you guys be if one day, in the distant future, that Jack Light will pitch against Mark Leiter Jr.? That would be cool. Yeah, it would be, be very in the same awesome. game, right? I, I mean, still have a hard time watching right now. I, I got to be honest with you. I... Uh, I cheat. I don't even watch the game. I wait till the game's over. Then I look how he did, and then I go back and watch it. I, I can't stomach it anymore. It's hard. I just can't stomach it. I got so you. You don't watch the game, but, but, but not you, live. You, the, like when he pitched the other night. Uh, when did I see him pitch? Monday. He was Monday. here the first night. 
I'm terrified. I can't help it. I just, I get that. I just, because I know every guy that steps up can take you deep. I care who's coming up. <laughs> so now there's a, and now he's in a position where he's coming in and close. I'd rather be on the mound pitching than, than totally. you, right? It yeah. sucks. Sometimes it sucks. And then when they do good, you're going, oh, that was great. No, it wasn't. It was horrible. Yeah. I'd rather look at the bar. And it happened by accident. In 2021, he was in uh, AAA with Detroit. And I forgot they had a day game. And I said, oh, my God. And I looked at the box score, and he, he went five really good innings. And then I watched it. I loved it because when he got in the jam, I knew nothing was going to happen because <laughs> I already saw the box score. It is weird. So yeah. I started doing that. So then there was a couple games that he didn't do. And he had a great year. I, I'm shocked the Tigers never called. He was he was pitcher of the year in their minor mm-hmm. league system, and they let him go. Yeah. Made no sense. So um, there was a game he gave up three runs. I'm watching it going, all right, this is the bad inning. But I was okay because yeah. I already knew. Yeah. Rather than not knowing and you're going, yeah. come, you got to get a dull player. Well, so, <laughs> so it's interesting you say that because I, I haven't gotten there yet. But although uh, Jack's debut in Detroit, I, um, you know, they, they were nice enough to give us a suite. So we sat up there, which I, I, I'd much rather sit behind a plate, right? You can see the flight of the ball. You see the hitter, you know, all that. And first inning, Jack, one, two, three. Second inning, he gives up runs. After the second day, I turned to my wife. I was like, Laurie, let's go down. Let's I gotta get go out throw here. up. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go throw up. After I throw up, I'll be downstairs. Yeah. And then I went downstairs oh, and whatever. Horrible. But like, it's so dumb, right? Like, we have no bearing, but it's, it's like, difficult. you're still. But I try not to. And it's just difficult to just not get your stomach going. Oh, shit, I'm person third. Because you care. You, know. you care. Well, I appreciate your guys' time. You've been, I've known the light of family since I was bar mitzvah. Yeah. I wish I, I hope I'm alive and able yeah. to see Jack Leiter yeah. pitch against Mark Leiter Jr. You yeah. know, thanks, Jay. Hope we, each guy goes eight innings is a tie game. Oh, oh my gosh, that's what we always rooted for. We could do this all day, but I remember I had teammates, and Mar- I wasn't pitching. Mark was pitching, so I'm sitting on the bench. I'm in Toronto, and. Sure enough, there's always a team. Of, oh, you're rooting for today. I'm yeah. like, I'll tell you one always. thing. What I'm rooting for, I hope you go over. <laughs> yeah. And I would always say this. Dan Gladden would give me crap. He would yell to Sparky, "Why is he in the dugout? Send him up." And I'm like, "What do you do that to me?" And bar- And I and I said, "I'll tell you this. If they asked me to pinch hit, I would do everything I could to get a hit off him. So what do you care what I'm watching?" That's true. I, that, that's another right? part. You'd say if I got in the box against my brother, hell yeah, I want to get a hit. I'll sh- let, uh, let me share this with you. So Al and I would do, I loved him when he was in a city or I was in a city because we would talk to each other. Hey, who? you want to know who's hot and who's not. That's like to me a big one. Who's chasing first pitch and who's hot, right? So uh, Al and I would talk. So I told Al about Matt Williams. I said, um, listen, if there's a man in scoring position, don't throw him a strike. He'll make get himself out. He's trying to knock the blah, blah, blah. So Matt Williams comes up to me be- right before the game's getting ready to start. Serious You were dude. still in the locker room, and he comes up and he goes, yeah, serious guy. And I, I really love being his teammate, but a little intimidating. And he goes, points his finger, gets up in my face, and he goes, I know you talked to your brother about how to pitch us, and I don't care. What I care about is what you tell him about me. And I said, fair enough. I said, uh, I told him that if you get up at a man scoring position, that you'll swing at anything, and you're trying to knock the run in. So he goes, that it? I said, yeah. He goes, thank you. And he walked away. I ran in the locker room. I called over. I said, ah, scratch it on Matt. I said, I had to tell him what. what uh. And one other guy. Oh, Chili oh, Davis. Chili Davis story. That was a bummer. Al's dominating. In I forgot what I, I said. Just blow him away, man. He's not going to catch up to your fastball. But, but Al strikes him out. Al strikes him out second time up. Chili's, and Chili and I, were we liked each other. We got along great. Yeah, he's great. He's staying away from me in the dugout because he's pissed that I told <laughs> told him what Al's gonna do, and you still striking you out. He get Al throws a slider, and yeah, he hits a homer. Oh, and I'm, but the worst part was, you know, we didn't have any nets back then in front of the die, right? He comes to score, and he comes in, and he tells everybody to get out of the way, lighter. Get it. He made me come out of the dugout <laughs> towards the on deck circle, and he wouldn't just shake my hand. He made me do this. He wanted yeah. Al to see. He made me do a double high five up in yeah, the air. That's funny. So, yeah, and then he sits down next to me afterwards, and he goes, Your brother's a dumbass. I can't believe he threw me that. <laughs> I remember that because I got him twice. This is in yeah. Anaheim, and the, uh, the Angels' third base dugout. And sure enough, this is when starting pitchers were allowed to Pitch, face guys yeah. three times, and he got me left field. That oh, was hilarious. He was owning him, and Chili wouldn't even talk to him. Wouldn't even look at me because he's like, "Man, you but it told was uncomfortable." Me. You had the jerky teammate that, like, Ooh, yeah, you always get one of them guys. Uh, I, I appreciate the time, gentlemen. yeah, Jay.
Great. Thank, You're welcome. Thanks, Jay. guys. Appreciate you guys. We care about you, Nice Jay. being here, It was Jay. fun. Thank you for guys coming in.